Episode 1, Have You Got What It Takes to Start Your Own Business? Welcome to the Be Your Own Boss podcast, the young entrepreneur's guide to starting a business. Whether you're thinking about business for the first time or you have an idea that you want to develop, then this is the podcast for you. I'm Mary and I'll be guiding you through this 15-part series that will keep you on track and help you think through the challenges that come with starting a business. Part of the Welsh Government's Business Wales service, Big Ideas Wales raises aspirations and supports young entrepreneurs' ambitions for business. Part funded by the European Regional Development Fund, Big Ideas Wales supports young people through online resources, business skills workshops and one-to-one sessions with an advisor to help your ideas become a reality. To get in touch with us, you can like and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Message us and one of the team will get back to you. Call us via the helpline on 03000 60 3000. Live chat on the Business Wales website. Or you can email us, bigideas at gov.wales. I wonder how many of you have got a good idea or want to start your own business and are asking the question, can I do it? You are not alone. Lots of young people dream of becoming their own boss and have ideas for their own business, with many starting the journey right now. You're probably not solely driven by money, are you? Maybe you have a passion, something you love to do that can be turned into a business or a brilliant idea bouncing around in your head. Maybe you have a desire to create the life you want and build something you can be proud of. There are some sweet benefits to starting your own business while you're young. Have a listen to our TOFFEE acronym and see if they apply to you. T is for time. You're young, so you've got years ahead of you to build a successful business. O is for optimism. It's your idea and you believe you can make it work. F is for freedom. You don't have anything holding you back, so why not start today? F is for flexibility. You're prepared to try something new and take risks. E is for energy. It's your business, your idea, so you want to put the hours in. E is for enthusiasm. You imagine your end goal and have the ambition to succeed. Did you know that 70% of working 16 to 24 year olds say that they would like to be their own boss at some point in the future? So why don't you join them and start now? There are so many reasons to work for yourself. It means you can make the decision, the ability to manage your own time. Remember, it will be your idea, your dream and no one else's so you can control the outcome. If you work hard, then the rewards are all yours. Working for yourself means you're in the driving seat of your life. You are in control and the career you want is in your hands. Remember though, it won't be plain sailing and there are some things you should consider before you get started. Your earnings will be irregular and not guaranteed like they would be if you worked for someone else. There won't be a regular salary. If you're ill or on holiday, then you will have to sacrifice your pay because there won't be any. Don't forget, working for yourself doesn't necessarily mean working by yourself, but you may find you miss out on the office social life. Another important thing to consider is that the rewards will be great, but you will need to put in long hours to achieve them. If you want to be successful, you need two things, passion and persistence. Successful entrepreneurs are often described as being passionate about their business. It's all about the emotional investment and believing in your idea 100%. Being enthusiastic is important and this can be infectious which draws people to support and buy from you. Always remember nothing comes easily in business and no one gets everything right the first time. It's okay to make mistakes, be prepared to make some but also be ready to learn from them. You're young, make and learn from your mistakes now. Be determined, be persistent even when there are setbacks. So you may be thinking, so when should I start? I think now is as good a time as any. Starting a business is a step-by-step process and there is no better time than now to take the first step. One of our business role models, Steve Dimmick, founder of Dupol, gave us this great piece of advice. Start your business now. Don't wait until your course finishes or for when every little piece of paperwork is in place. Believe in yourself and in your idea. Start now. I sat down with Steve to discuss how he took the first step into starting his own business and how it has evolved from there. Hi, Steve. Hiya. How are Tina. you doing? Really good, thank you. Really good. Good, good. Tell us a bit about your story then, your business. 
Cool. Uh, so, hello everyone. I'm Steve Dimmick. I'm Chief Commercial Officer at Dupol. D O O P O L L. Uh, we're a Cardiff based company and uh, we run online surveys. And where did you get this idea? How did it all start? Good question, Mary. Um, we got this idea when clients in our old business, which was a design agency, ultimately a creative communications consultancy, messed us around. Um, we would deliver a project on time, on spec, on budget, and they kept coming back to us after we'd done everything that we had committed to and that they had, they had asked of us, um, saying, can you just change this one more thing? Can you? I've showed it to someone else and they wanted us to move this around or change the website or update the brochure. And we found it really, really frustrating because we were only a small business and obviously time is money. And we'd moved on to the next project, so it was taking us off the new projects we were supposed to be working on. Um, so it wasn't very cost effective and it was really kind of disruptive. And so the idea was, how can we engage with everybody in an organisation rather than just the people that we get a brief from? How can we get feedback from the entire business so that if somebody says, oh, can you change this in the brochure? We'll say, well, no, because 82% of your business think that it should be exactly as we've presented it. Um, so it was a, a, a an idea that was created to solve a problem. And I think that's always the best uh, type of business to start is one that actually solves a problem and isn't just a nice idea. And something that's affecting your life or you've come across something you think this would be much easier if this existed. Yeah, of course. So they, you know, we were one small design agency. There are hundreds, well, thousands, tens of thousands of design agencies and they all complain about the fact that clients move the goalposts after a project's finished. Um, and so our thinking was, well, if it's right for us, then there's a good chance it's going to be right for a lot of other people. Um, so this is going right back. This is four years ago now, yeah? And we, yeah, that's kind of where the idea started. How difficult was it to turn that idea into a business? Good question again. Um, so it was initially, okay, this is a really good point, so I'll spend a little longer on this. Creating a business is a very different thing to creating a thing. So we set ourselves... Um, the target of creating a prototype, like a working version of uh, this piece of software. It was just a website, basically. And we met on the Monday morning in Cozy Club in the middle of Cardiff on the Hayes. My chicken poxed uh, three-year-old daughter, two-year-old daughter was with me. Um, and we sat down and we decided, right, this is what we need to uh, achieve, is something that we'll, we'll be able to send out to people and everybody in the business will be able to respond. So we sat down, we cranked out some ideas, and then Mark and Sam, my two co-founders at Dupol, set about coding and designing and all of the great stuff there that I have very little idea about, even four years on. And I set out to find in people that would be up for coming to our launch, our big launch of this brand new product, which was going to happen at Friday lunchtime. So we built the first version of Dupol in four and a half days. Whoa. So it doesn't, you don't have to take forever to get something done. And I, don't get me wrong, this is like yogurt pots and string. It was, what, there's so many funny stories about this. When we released it and showed it to people in the room at the, at the launch, we had never even tested it. <laughs> <gasps> so the first people to ever use Dupol were the people that were it. And it was only literally in the moment when we were asking them to use it that we realised, um, heck, you know, what have we done? This, this is probably going to go wrong. And one of the things we realised uh, that we hadn't done was limit the number. So it was all numbers on a screen and it was percentage response. So one person voted and an answer went to 100%. Another person voted, it went 50-50. And then a third person voted and it went 33 to 66 but we had, we hadn't limited the numbers so on the screen it was a projector and it was like 33.33333333 and it went all the way off the screen basically um and so across onto mark's face who was stood next to the screen so a little bit cringeworthy and just but funny we were laughing about it um but what was great and why this is a great way of doing it in the room as people were answering one of the key selling points of dupole is it's real time 
so you can feel the impact your answer is having. So literally, you press an answer on your mobile, and it, it changes on the big screen. And they were audible gasps. So we could hear people going like, whoa, and, and cool. And yeah. straight away, there's just that, I think an entrepreneur can feel it. You can just sense it in your gut of there's magic there. There's something there that people haven't experienced before. And and that was I mean, even now, like four years on, you probably see it in me. I, I still remember that vividly. And it makes the heart, hairs on my arms go up is that, yeah, that magic, when you see you've got something and people are excited about it, it's, it's a really cool and a really cool thing and a really great reason to run your own thing. Yeah. So it's just thinking about that thing, isn't it? That thing, as you said, that people need and that doesn't already exist. So that buzz you had was knowing there's nothing quite like this yet. Yes, a little bit. I guess I don't agree with the it doesn't already exist. So my example here would be Apple. You know, Apple have sold billions and billions of iPhones now. But when they created the iPhone, there was already, um, you know, Walkmen. <laughs> there was already mobile phones. There were already cameras. Um, and whatever else was there in version one, there were already calculators. Mm. But Jobs and Co. were the first people to bring it all together. So it's not like they reinvented the wheel. They just made the wheel a bit better. Mm. That makes sense. So generally, you don't have to invent something. You don't have to come up with something that's absolutely brand new. You can make something quicker, something smaller or bigger, you mm. know, something faster, something tastier, uh, something more exciting then there's still a market for it. Don't yeah. think that you have to come up with something unique because it's it's bloody hard yeah, to do yeah. something unique. No, that's really good advice. Yeah. So when did it go from this first launch to being your job and your business? Cool. Um, so this is, a, I think, something really important for people to think about. I don't think that you have to go all in. You don't have to quit whatever you're doing, whether you're you know, stacking shelves is the most common thing or whether you're... Uh, working as an intern or got your first job as a graduate, whether you're delivering papers or whatever it might be, don't stop doing that would be my advice. Work on something, work on the thing um, as a, an evenings and weekends or lunch hour or whatever you can get away with. Work on it in your spare time until you get traction. So what they mean by traction is paying customers. It's no good having friends or families say, wow, that thing looks great, Steve. Well, thanks. Um, and, and ultimately, you know, they're they always going to say that. What do you think of this thing that I've spent the last six months making? Um, yeah, it's fab. What is it? <laughs> you know, so um, your friends and family are the best liars on earth and you can't trust them. So especially when it comes to something that you're uh, enthused about. So get it out there. If you can persuade other people that you've never met before to pay money for it, then that's when you've got the seed of a good business. And that's what we had. So our first ever paying customer uh, was Swansea University School of Management. And they paid us a lot of money uh, to get a really, really early version of Dupol. Um, and it blew us away. And from that, you know, I don't want people to get carried away, but that ultimately gave us a valuation on the business when we took investment six months later of a million pounds. So a single deal and then a pipeline of potential other deals made us, yeah, uh, or made investors trust that we were already worth a million, um, which still blows my mind. You make it sound like quite a smooth journey. Have there been any obstacles or what, what have been the main challenges that you've faced? Okay, um, it's not a smooth journey. So do not get in for the easy ride. Do not get in if you think it looks cool. You should, you should get into this if it's burning inside you, if it's literally like you can't choose to do something else. Um, and I think that, that will, you'll know. You just have to listen to your inner voice. And, um, yeah, if you're doing a job, a dead-end job, and you go in and it's you're just there because of the salary. It's great advice I got when I was in London. I worked in London after graduating. And... Um, my old manager in London told me that there's th the three worst drugs on earth, or the three most addictive drugs, sorry, on earth are, are caffeine, nicotine, and a monthly salary. And getting off a monthly salary is the toughest of them all. Yeah, it's, it's so addictive because you're there, you've got your rent to pay, and your, you know, your nights out with your friends and whatever else. 
but yeah, you shouldn't you shouldn't get into it for the easy ride because it's so exhausting and and it's so at times demoralizing. You know, you go into something and you're certain it's going to be a deal. You're certain that it's something's going to fly, and then it dies, and you don't know why. And if you get, if, as you get better, you find out why it didn't work. But at the start, you're, you're clueless. Mm. And um, yeah, there's a lot of people out there that will admit this when you kind of really confront them that they still don't know what they're doing. <laughs> most most entrepreneurs are making it up. As winging they go. it, a yeah, bit. absolutely winging it. And you get a bit better at winging it. You realize you can't wing it. So admitting that you don't know is a really like big learning curve. And for someone like me, that's super hard. I still, I still wing it probably more than I should. Um, but then sometimes winging it forces you to evolve. Yeah. So you say, okay, we can do that. I'll figure then, it out later. And then you go back to your team and say, hey, I've got us a deal. Awesome. But we need to build this. <laughs> and they're like, what? <laughs> yeah. There's no way we can do that by this date. And, you know, sometimes it comes off. Sometimes you have to call people back and say, oh, sorry, I misjudge this yeah. um it sounds like the highs are extremely high and the lows are very challenging yeah i'd, I'd say that's that's a really good appraisal and I, I i would what i would say though is the middle ground is is better than being in a dead-end job what's the main piece of advice you'd give a young person who's dreaming of starting their own business uh so the number one piece of advice from me is always why haven't you started already start just do it you know, just get it out there. We build a prototype in four and a half days. You can you can sell your first version of whatever it is to somebody. And ideally, that shouldn't be someone you know. But if it is, that's that's cool. Um, but stop coming up with the excuses because they will be excuses. They'll be excuses. And they're mainly fears. They're fears that it won't work. Um, so my advice is just start. And you'll say, oh, well, I've got to finish my degree or I haven't finished my A-levels. Um, but if that idea is any good, you can do it. You know, you can do it on the weekend. You can now the people listening to this do not realize how lucky they are. Yeah. So I don't want to sound like an old codger, but 20 years ago, I had my first job out of university, and we had to take it in turns to go on the internet computer. And that was like they won't even know what dial-up is. So dial-up <laughs> is the thing that you had to like wait for a single crappy website to load. You literally have like a computer, I, I don't know, 100, maybe a 1,000 times more powerful than the, the internet computer that my entire office uh, used to rely on in your hand, in your mobile phone, yeah? Um, and so there's never been a better time to start a business. Thank you very much, Steve. If that doesn't motivate you, I don't know what will. You can find Steve's role model profile and others in your area on our website. Go and check them out. Stay tuned for episode two when we'll be discussing the steps to coming up with an idea for your business and over the coming weeks we'll be looking into a range of topics from funding and market research to business plans and pricing. We've got everything you could possibly need to start your own business and if you've still got questions you need answers to then get in touch. To get in touch with us you can like and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Message us and one of the team will get back to you. Call us via the helpline on 03000 60 3000. Live chat on the Business Wales website or send us an email bigideas at gov.wales. I'll speak to you all again very soon.